Welcome to Inside Azure AI Foundry, where we put the latest models and tools to the test. I'm April, your host for this episode, and today we're diving into one of the most game-changing capabilities of GPT-5, freeform tool calling. If you worked with AI agents or assistants before, then you're probably familiar with the traditional approach, where you have to define tools using structured JSON schemas. You specify exact parameters, types, and formats, it is powerful, but it's also rigid. GPT-5 changes this completely. Instead of requiring structured tool definitions, it can understand natural language instructions about how to use tools. Today, I'll show you freeform tool calling in action with GPT-5 using Scikit-Learn's Iris dataset. We're gonna ask the model to both generate and run its own SQL queries against the data. Plus, we'll also prompt a model to use Python to create some charts using matplotlib. And catch this, we won't need to wrap any of the raw text payloads into structured JSON. GPT-5 will be able to interact with the tools that I define using natural text output. I'll give the model this prompt. Write SQL to compute the mean of the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, all grouped by species. And then provide a tiny CSV with species in the four means all rounded to two decimals. And then the next thing I wanted to do is to write Python to read that CSV string, which will be provided as tool output, and then pretty print that as a table and produce a bar chart of the mean petal length by species using matplotlib. So let's get started. All right, so let's kick things off from the top. I have some information in here just in case you need further context of what's happening in this script. And then just below that, just past the import statements, I do set up my environment variables in a .env file. That also includes how I'm going to authenticate, which in this case, I'll be using my API key. Alternatively, I do recommend using enter ID as it is going to be more secure. But in any case, I have mine over in a .env file. So we're gonna load those. And then from there, we're going to create the client. Now, in terms of the environment variables that's going to be needed, you'll need your API key, as I mentioned, or however you're going to authenticate. For example, if you're using a default Azure credential or a default credential. And then next, the API version followed by the endpoint, and then also your model deployment name. So again, we're using GPT-5 for this, so that should be the deployment that you're using for this particular sample. Moving on down, I have some automatic data setup in here for you. So that way, when you go to run this, it's going to create the Iris data set locally for you, rather than me include the data set directly in the sample repo. Now, as a heads up, I did add some code in here to rename columns to be SQL friendly. So what it's going to do is remove spaces as well as special characters. And then as I move down here, I wanna call out the SQLite CSV tool class. So this is going to convert CSV data into a queryable SQL database. It's going to be an in-memory database for fast querying without the file input output. And so in terms of the sample, what it's going to do is enable me to show you how the tools can have very rich internal logic while presenting simple interfaces. Let's see if there's anything else in here I wanna call out specifically. Okay, not necessarily. As you can see, I do have comments here in the code, so I won't read every single comment that I have here out loud for you all. But the very next thing that I do want to call out, however, is this execution that's going to be happening. So the Python code itself is going to be executed in a sandbox environment. What we're going to get in return is going to be a standard output. It's going to be generating a plot graph using matplotlib, and it's going to save that as a file. And we'll take a look at that once we run it. But what I really want to make sure doesn't go missed is this one particular exec function that's here. So this is going to execute arbitrary Python code with the matplotlib support. From a safety concern, this is only being used for demo purposes. And so with that said, the reason that we want to be careful in using this exec function more so in a production environment is that we are going to be running code that the model writes. And we can assume that that code is not particularly trusted. So with that said, 
If you are going to be using this exact function, what I do recommend is that you only use this in a disposable isolated environment. So like a lockdown container or, or a VM. So make sure that there's no secrets, there's limited file access, and then there's also strict timeouts. Now for production, I would say you probably want to replace this exact function with narrow vetted tools or like a sandbox service instead. But with the safety aside, what I also want to call out is that AI can actually generate and run its own analysis code, but we have to make sure that we're putting safety and security first. And now here's where things get really cool. Let me scroll up a bit. I might've went past it. I was so excited. So we're going to call the GPT-5 model with some tools. And so we don't need to define any structured tool schemas. We are literally using natural language here. All we need to do is tell GPT-5 how to format the requests. And with this code sample that I'm providing you, you can add new tools just by updating the prompt. So down here in this parse and execute tools function, what I have happening here is that there's some regular expression parsing here instead of just structured JSON parsing. This is going to be more natural and it's going to be less brittle than using strict schemas. Plus, it also adds an easy way to add new code block types. And then finally, as I scroll towards the bottom, we have this run conversations function, and this is going to provide an iterative conversation flow. What's really great is that the tool results become part of the conversation. So it's like having a human analyst that's asking for data and then getting the results and then they're continuing. And there's not going to be any complex tool call ID management that's going to be necessary. And so how does it know when to stop this loop? Well, what it's going to be looking for is when there's no more tools to be called, or if we set the max iterations, it's going to be checking when those iterations have been reached. And I do believe that brings us towards the end of our code. Yeah, as you can see here, I did set the max iterations to be five. Therefore, we're not going to continue to do this over and over and over and over again. So I do recommend setting an iteration so you don't have any infinite loops. And yeah, so let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm gonna open up my terminal here. All right. All right, so the data has been created we have 150 rows. I'm going to actually bring this terminal a little higher because right now we're entering that first iteration. And if you recall, I mentioned that we can define how many times we're going to loop through this. And so I have it set at five. Right now we're entering the first one. And I'll show you that data while it does this. Oh, wait. <laughs> It moved quite faster than I thought it was going to. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Now, again, the model is creating the SQL itself here. So my SQL is a little rusty, but let's see if we can figure this one out. So what's happening is that it's going to take that iris table that was created from earlier. It's going to group the flowers by their species and then do some cleanup of the numeric columns. So it's going to strip the spaces, ignore blanks, and it'll convert text to numbers. And then from there, we're going to compute the average sepal length and the sepal width and the petal length and the petal width for each of those species. And then we're going to round each result to two decimal places, and then we're going to list them in order by the species. I guess my sequel's not too bad, huh? Let's see what else has happened here. Now we get into our Python code that's going to be run. And so what we're doing here, or what the model's doing here, is that it's taking that CSV string based on that SQL output tool that was used from above, and it's going to create a table and a plot with the average of the petal length by species. Let's see what else has happened here. I think I might have went a little too fast. One second. Oh, it dropped me down. It's okay. All right, let's see what else we have. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So 
it's really like it's having a conversation with itself. Um, and that really became evident to me once I made it down here to the third iteration and we get that response from GPT-5. So it's funny because it's thanking itself for the results and it's taking that information and it's summarizing what's going on here. We have some insight around the pedal length uncertainties. Oh, it's moving again. I guess it's still going through the iterations. Let's see. Yeah, well, let me get back to that top. Sorry about that, everyone. But, and I do believe it is creating more charts for us. Yeah, this is pretty robust and I literally only use natural language to generate this. Okay, we're down at the fifth iteration. Yeah, I won't dive into the details of the conversation that it's having with itself. I definitely recommend trying this on your own so you can actually see this in action and go through the, the conversation the model's having with itself each time it does a new iteration. And it's essentially learning from itself. And I think from here we should be just about done. Okay, we do have some analysis or some, some takeaways it's come, for, uh, it's come with as well. All right, we have some classification reports that are here. And then we do have the output of figures. So this was, I'm assuming to be a successful run, but let's take a look at what it has provided us. All right, to start off, we have this plot that was generated in which we're looking at the relationship between the pedal length as well as the pedal width. Let's see what else we have here. Yes, more plots that are based on that relationship. And yes, another one. So what I would do at this point, based on the given prompt that's been given to the model, I would go back, look through the output that I have here so I can really understand what the model was going through as it was reasoning, as it was doing its tool calls and then passing that output literally back to itself to figure out what's the next thing that it should do. If I head back to the actual prompt that we passed in, let me see. One could assume that the model was able to perform what we requested. That wraps up this episode of Inside Azure AI Foundry. Explore freeform tool calling today with GPT-5 in Azure AI Foundry. I'll be back soon with another episode sharing the latest news and drops. But until then, come join me over in the Discord where you can provide feedback and ask questions. Plus, always like to see what you're creating. All right, I'll see you in the next episode.